How was his free agency pitch to you? Did he do a good job trying to pitch the Yankees? I think he, honestly, he did a good job. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, how did Manny? How did you guys kind of become friendly, you and CC? <laughs> well, it goes back to uh, you know when I came up, um, you know, as a rookie. Obviously, knew a couple of guys on the Yankee side: A. Rod, Cano, Melky, and uh, you know, CC was always uh, you know professional about his game. You know, always came up to me: Hey, what's up, man? Hey, congrats, welcome to big leagues, and uh, you know, introduced himself. And uh, you know, ever since then, we kind of kept in touch. And Jordan Brand came around, and you know, got got into a better uh, relationship after that. So, um, you know, he's been first class act since day one since I met him since since a rookie. Are you Jordan Brand guys like all close like that too? I mean, like, is there a connection between all of you? We are. It's not. It's not a lot of us, and it's uh, you know, most of the guys are superstars. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's it's uh, it's fun to be to be able to be friends with a lot of these guys, and and uh, you know, for me, a lot of the guys that I probably wouldn't normally know, you know, because I don't play against a lot of these guys. So. Um, and me being an old man now, you know, I don't know a lot of these guys. So it's cool to have that relationship. We have a group chat, and um, it gets it gets fun. It gets fired up. Oh, wait, so you got a Jordan brand group chat? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I like it. So yeah. so what kind of, like, content gets discussed on the Jordan brand group chat? We got it all. It's yeah. everything. A lot, a lot of roasting. <laughs> everything goes on in there. Oh, all right. who, who gets roasted the most? Because let me just explain, man. I don't got, know who gets roasted the uh, most, but yeah. I know... Dexter is always the one the that's one starting start. a lot of the shit. Yeah. Dexter Fowler? Dexter Fowler, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He likes to just stir it up? Yeah, stirs up the pot. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It up. <laughs> I think we all, everyone kind of gets get, gets a little bit of everything. I think, uh, you know, we give our fair share to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> that's you know? how you keep people honest, right? You know, definitely. I mean, it's like, I, I was asking because on our group chat, I definitely am the one who gets roasted most. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, with me, Cece, and our boys. Like, no question I am. But it's okay. It keeps us all honest, you know? Sure, I, sure. I, I'm the instigator on another group chat. So it kind of it <laughs> balances, balances, it, out. It, does, balances right? it out for sure. It does. All right, so since you're a Jordan brand guy, do you have, like, do you have a favorite pair? Because I see you rocking neon. Yeah, I try, to, fresh too. I try yeah. to be loud on the field, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get to wear these outside the field, so you might as well do. bring a pair. I got guys inside telling me all the time, why you bring a different pair of shoes all the time? I'm like, well, I'm not going to wear them outside in the field, so might as well wear them on the yard, you know, let everybody else see them. You know, we got, we got taken care of, so... Uh, you know, we got to show out our swag sometimes. Are you a size 12 by chance, man? No. <laughs> He's a 13. <laughs> All right. All right. Fair enough. Because they look good, man. But, you know, this kind of reminds me of what we were talking about the one time, see, about, like, how, like, it would be cool if, if, like, people started, like, focusing on when you guys walk in, like, the same way in the NBA, how, yeah. like, there's the focus on outfits that way. Like, I would love that because I know Manny's a stylish dude. Like, Definitely. That should be profiled before every For game, sure. you know? Then For it's sure. like, oh, what Jays is he rocking today? But I, I feel like they're doing that more, and it's getting fans into it more. Yeah. You got, like, a few more fan pages where guys' outfits are getting posted and different things, like, off the field. And I think that's what I, I drives, like, you know, younger fans towards the sport is, like, seeing that – you know, baseball players are cool. <laughs> <laughs> they see us all born just wearing uniforms all day. <laughs> that should be the marketing slogan, right? There. Baseball players are cool. Baseball players are not, cool. Not let the kids play because obviously that shit ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, speaking of let's the, let the kids play, Manny. Like, do you do you love pimping a home run? Like, is that something you enjoy? <sighs> I don't. <sighs> depends. Okay. Depends on who it is. Depends on the situation of the game. Um. Do I like it? Do I like seeing it? Fuck yeah, I do. Of course, I was about to <laughs> say, hell yeah. I was, about, I was waiting for him to answer this, and I was about to be like, wait, what? <laughs> no, I like watching it. I mean, for myself, I, I don't like pimping it myself. I mean, I, I have my own little just nice and easy, but watching that shit. <laughs> Yo, you know, I'm, I'm I mean, into, like, Dietrich right now. Like, he's got the ooh, best pimp jobs swag. right now. He's dropping the bat and, like, walking and shit, but he's hitting these balls 500 feet, like. You don't want to see him pimp it? Don't fucking throw the ball over the plate. <laughs> That's I, right. I, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And then Pui comes up right behind him and hits one and then sprints out of the box. Yeah. Like, what you want? You know what I'm saying? Like, you want the sprinter? You want, you the, want the sprinter? You, you want the walk? I mean, yeah. they both, there's both runs. You and, know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and they both are stylish in their own way. Yeah, you know? man. I mean, I. As a fan, I've always loved it, you know? Like, I remember when Jabba was doing the fist pumping and it became, like, a big talk yeah. show radio topic here in New York. And I was like, I love that. Like, and at that point, that was before I was on air. I'm like, as a fan, 
when he gets two strikes, I'm like waiting for that. You know, <laughs> like if I see a big home run in a big spot, like even like indeed he still denies it, but his home run against the Twins in the wild card game a couple of years ago, the way he just oh, yeah, like he flipped, flipped the bat, yeah, yeah, yeah man, course. like that's like. As much a part of the highlight for me is seeing the ball yeah. go soaring into the right field seat. Just that emotion. Motions. Yeah. It's just that raw emotion of like seeing guys get fired up. Like we're not robots. You know what I'm saying? Like you get fired up. You like to have fun. And, and uh, that's part of it. And baseball players are cool. Baseball we're players are cool. <laughs> we're starting that. <laughs> that should be your Instagram hashtag like, with every outfit. Do you, uh, Manny, are you, on, are you on social media a lot? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Do I you, just creep though. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you have do you have like a burner account that you're checking? No, out no, out just on mine. I just just creep on people. <laughs> <laughs> I just scroll down the pictures, see where everybody's wearing, see their stories. That's good. See what's happening. Isn't I'm, it funny? Like could, like sometimes all of a sudden you're just like on it. You're like going through stories. It's like well, a half an hour went by. Like what quick. happened? I know. Quick. It does. Do you remember? It was a it was a big story when Manny followed the Yes Network on Instagram in the office. <laughs> was that? A, oh yeah, because I mean, it's nothing going on. It's right. dead. So like and people any like, kind of little. LeBron liking the photo of Kyrie the other day. Like, yeah. Uh, that's not yeah. fucking news. Yeah. Who cares? Don't put that on ESPN. Like, that's <laughs> not news, bro. Like, nobody cares. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, it's a like on the Instagram. And, like, people go crazy because it's the off season. It was funny, like, seeing someone like John Heyman reporting on Manny Machado has followed the yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> did, did you know God. when you did it, people were going to be like, oh, what's no. this about? No. I mean, it's. We're following, you know, we're doing the tour, you know, you, you, you want to know where you're getting yourself into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, I'm not just going to go somewhere in blind. So you follow all these things, you kind of see the organization, see, you know, what they're about. And, uh, you know, I didn't think it was going to be a big story, but obviously uh, I was wrong. Did you want to, like, know? unfollow after? Like, didn't know I did, but I had, I, I had no chance. <laughs> <laughs> after it came out, I had no choice. Oh, he unfollowed the Yes <laughs> Network. I mean, it would have been worse. So it would have been well. worse. So did you did you unfollow it or did you stay did you stay following in that moment? Honestly, I think I just kept following it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we, I played against the Yankees for yeah. eight years. I mean, I've, we've been following them for a while, you know. I mean, it's just... Just the nature of it. We follow them. We follow, you know, Tampa's, Toronto's, you know, Boston. You know, we follow them all. You know, you kind of, especially my wife. My wife's always on, you know, whenever she's not at the games, you want to keep score on different type, you know, different ways. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's just... Just all talk. To people, it's you it's know, hilarious. Just it's, it's just a new age of, of what it you know what sports is though in, in social media and that's just the way people keep up with guys now. And sometimes yeah. it is a story, and a lot of times it's not though. Well, also the Yes Network, we appreciate it, Manny, and we and we want you to continue to follow our outstanding <laughs> content there because I also work there. But the you know it is interesting because I do feel like today, and we see it. I think in NBA free agency, it's become huge too, where it's like people try and put together the clues of like oh. This guy followed that guy, and this guy followed that guy. And I guess it was a credit to your camp and the way you guys kept information tight that that was all there really was for people to go on in free agency because there wasn't, like, hard news, so to speak. Because I think even, like, I don't know who it was in your family was wearing, like, a little White Sox outfit or something, and everyone's like, oh, man, he's going to the White Sox. It's like, <laughs> the only thing was my brother lies in the he, White he Sox. Was <laughs> Right. So, like, what's he going to do? If your brother-in-law is getting a gift for a kid, he's giving him White Sox stuff yeah. or something, right? Or like, or, it is what it is. W was that w – how much was the pull to try and join – I mean, you have family over there. Also, John Jay is, yeah. a, is a really close friend, right? Like, I mean, how much did that weigh on you, the opportunity to be with those guys? Well, you know, you as a kid, we always dreamed to, uh, you know, play in the big leagues, obviously, win a World Series, you know. But at the end of the day, you always – you would love to play with your friends. You know, you would love to play with your boys. You would, mm -hmm. I would love to play with my family. So, yeah, it definitely was a big, big part of it, um, part of a decision that I had to make, um, you know, because it would have been pretty cool to be, you know, when, you know, they're not to talk shit about them, but, you know, they're about to, you know, we got a couple more years in the big leagues, and, um, you know, I'm still way younger than them, so I still got a lot more, way more time. So, mm. you know, it was it was a decision that was kind of tough, but, it would have been freaking awesome if I would have been a part of that and, you know, actually put on the same uniform, be in the clubhouse, go on the road with them, like, just, just experience the whole baseball, you know, and I'm over here by myself in San Diego, <laughs> you know, we're a great team, great teammates, but, you know, it's different when it's family and, and close friends, 
Yeah, I mean, a brother-in-law is like a totally different level of like, you know I mean? That's not just your boy. That's yeah. No, that's a different family. level. That is your family. Yeah. I mean, and was your wife like, I mean, that must have been a pull for her too. Like thinking, hey, yeah. you know, I can be this close to my family I mean, it was well. definitely talked about a lot throughout the family. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. You yeah. Know, it's, it's just the truth. It's every day we could play together. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be dying together. You know? it's one flight for everybody. <laughs> you know? so, one same hotel. One same hotel. Everybody. Everybody's good, you know, so it would have been a lot easier for the family. Did you enjoy free agency, like, going through the whole process? Because I know, like, when I went through it in 2008, I didn't I didn't have fun. I thought it was going to be fun and the touring around and all that stuff, but it wasn't as fun as I, I expected. No, it was it was definitely different. It was totally different than what I expected. I, You know, everybody always talked about, I mean, the, 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 the actual... Um, like the trips going to the places, like the tour was kind of cool. You know, you, you get to go to the stadiums and enjoy it and they're kind of showing you love and, you know, they put your name, your walkout, your jersey. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's all cool. But the other stuff about it, just just miserable. You're just waiting around and you're like, man, like this is the one time I get to choose where I want to go. You know, people actually want you and you're just waiting around. The other teams on the other side are just kind of just holding off on you and like, oh, yeah, we don't know this and that. Like just takes forever especially this year how how the game's changing and mm -hmm. with the free agents you know it was it was it just wasn't fun and it wasn't fun for me so i could just imagine what's going on you know with crimber out there and kaiko so um you know but at the end of the day grateful for where i'm at grateful for the decision i made and you know i think at the end of the day you look back on it it's something that you learn from you kind of take it in for what it is but you know it was kind of fun but at the same time kind of a headache and, but it, it it always help you it'll help you be a better leader too with younger guys coming up and you going through that and knowing what the situation is and helping being able to talk to guys guys will come to you a lot now 100% and want to talk about free agency and you'll have all the info you know yeah, what I'm saying 100%. so it'll help you be a better leader yeah 100% what was the moment you were most frustrated in during the period Manny because you're right it's completely different than it was even when C was a free agent in 08 because we've seen these timetables they drag out even with a stud in his you know going into his age 25 or 26 season it's a different you know, it's a different period of time that it takes these teams to make decisions. So, like, what what was, was there? Do you remember the point where you were like most frustrated during that period? Honestly, I, not really. To be honest, I thought I was, uh, you know, I knew what I was, what I deserved. I knew what I was gonna get. Um, you know, it was just a matter of just waiting, waiting game. You know, they they wanted to wait, we we're gonna wait. I was, at the end of the day, I had the upper hand. You know, I knew they were gonna want me, and I knew what I could bring to the table. And at the end of the day, it was gonna happen. So. I wasn't frustrated at times. Were you pissed off at times? Yeah, you know, a bunch of lies going on up mm. there, back and forth. Are you just like, you know, what's going on? Are you serious right now? But other than that, I mean, I think it was, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Well, because it did get to a point, right, where your agent had to make a statement saying, whoa, whoa, this is totally false, a lot right? Of, a lot of false occupations out there. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of lies that go through. That, that's the one thing I learned. <laughs> <laughs> do not believe everything you read out there. <laughs> That's one thing. Do not believe it because it's not true. I could imagine that. Like, if you're a free agent and, like, obviously, you know, there are times reporters have scoops, of course. Like, we see that all the time. But, like, you're reading something about yourself and you're just like, what? this is just, like, I have no interest in Bro, this I'm place. Bro, I'm so glad that I wasn't a free agent during, like, social media era because oh. I would have been on social media. That ain't true. <laughs> That's a fucking lie. He lying. That ain't happened. I would have been. I'd be, be going off. Dog. Like I'd be putting everybody on blast, like going crazy. Like I, 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 could, I can't hold it like that. So like, it's good that you know I was a free agent when it was no social media. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not as easy as it was back then. No, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> now were you not? Were you checking Twitter too, or just? Oh yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoever yeah. tells you that they don't check it, they're lying. I was on yeah. that every day, and especially every in the off day. season because it's the off season, so you have there's nothing going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like some sometimes like the story gets kind of like. You forget about the player, yeah. whereas more so it just talk, start talking, turn into a story and this and that. And but you forget about the player that you're getting and, and what he's done and the talent that he has. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I, I feel like sometimes it gets away from that. I mean, with with every sport and anything. I, I mean, NFL draft. I say the same thing. You know, as soon as the season's over and you know they cut the tape and then it's like you got you never seen these kids play before. Mm -hmm. It's all about the draft. Like you just watched all these kids play against Oklahoma, Alabama, whatever. <laughs> Like, draft them on that, not for what they can, how fast they can run or how many times they can lift 225. It's crazy. That is a great point. I, it always, it, it fascinates me how underrated 
what you actually do on the field becomes in, in that process, especially the NFL draft. Like, all of a sudden, the bench press matters more than the Why? 20 sacks you had against the top competition. You just saw this guy play against yeah. the comp, top, uh, yeah. comp, top competition. What difference does it make? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Check like, it's crazy. game, balling out. Like, it's what? crazy, like, man. How much it, better can you play? Or? It happens with yeah. every sport. Watch out how crazy it gets this free agency, uh, this offseason with basketball. Oh, like, yeah. Like, and them talking about different players and this and that. Even with Kawhi last year. This time last year, Kawhi was – the worst player in, in, in Popovich couldn't handle him and this and that. Now he's the greatest player in Toronto uh, franchise history. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you just got to let the guys play and get out there, man. It does. It swings back and forth so quickly. I have to ask you, Manny, because CeCe's like, you know, he's the elder statesman here. How was his free agency pitch to you? Did he do a good job trying to pitch the Yankees? I think he – Honestly, he did a good job. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> he, kept, he kept the professional. Yeah, you know, I mean, just, you know, let him be. I, mean, I was bugging him more. Though. I felt like I was bugging him because uh, I was texting like every couple of weeks, like, "Yo, what's where up? we at?" <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him here bad, man. I, I just uh, know what type of t- type of talent he has, and the type of player he is, and the type of type of guy he is in our clubhouse would have been great. But I'm happy for him, you know, in San Diego. I, I think it's a good spot for him too. It, it was interesting too because I will say, like, there is a faction of. I mean, I think it's worked out for everybody right like things have gone well you know with the Yankees and you guys are off to a really good start in San Diego and I think you know you're going to have an awesome core there for a long time but it's funny like there's definitely still a faction of Yankee fans who are upset that the Yankees didn't sign you. Like yeah, they, but that's not his fault. No, I'm saying I'm saying it as a compliment to oh, him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm saying it as a compliment to Manny that even as well as things have gone this year at third base, like Yankee fans loved you so much and were so fascinated by you but that they're still like, like man, I wish you would have had that guy. Yeah, obviously not your no. fault. But like that's how much – I mean, I'm wondering – I bring it up to say, did you feel that love from the Yankee fans? Or could you tell – how badly Yankee fans wanted you. Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole offseason was, you know, hearing those mix, you know, hey, we want Manny, we want, we want Machado, we want Machado. So it was it was pretty cool. I mean, I played it my, my, you know, my entire career. Obviously, it was on the other side, obviously. And, uh, you know, it, it was it's always been a pleasure to play here. And, uh, you know, you get mixed emotions of the Yankees fans, and you just, you know, they love you when you play for them, and they hate you when you're on the other side. It's just just what it is but they they respect the game they know players they know baseball you know that's why i think that's what's so cool about you know playing here and playing against the yankees that you always knew that when you came in here they were gonna you know they were gonna boo you they were gonna throw stuff at you they were gonna heckle you they were gonna say bunch of motherfuck you, yeah. motherfuck you. <laughs> you know but they respect your game you know when you came out here and, and you balled out and you beat the yankees they respected that obviously they didn't like it but they've always respected it. So I always thought that was pretty cool. That is. Like, I see, you've always talked about that, too, with, like, just the fan experience here and how different it is, like, you know, as an opponent versus, you know, home player and just, like, how you feel these fans, you know? And it is a little different than other organizations oh, in that regard. Yeah, big time. I mean, like you said, these fans, they know baseball and they know, you know, what they want. And yeah. it was just like, I mean, just, you know, his first at bat and they started booing. And I'm like, <laughs> that's love, though. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, the boo was like, we wish he was here more yeah. so than like, boo, we don't like him. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just, you, you got to understand these fans and, and they're real passionate and they're real fans. Yeah, they are. Now, see, you're probably happy that you're not pitching against the Padres so that you don't have to face definitely, this guy, right? Definitely. Like, I, I got to look up the exact numbers. But it's I just, a lot. Yeah. I just remember, <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking them up. I, just, I, I remember the one ball that Manny, oh, actually, I have CC versus batters up here. I remember the one ball Manny hit off you. To left field, that was like, oh, I knew it was. Yeah, a, which one? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you know the one. It was like 470 feet. Yo, and then we get on the group chat, and then it's like, you, you should see it like when he takes me deep or so you take, like something happens on the group chat, like when we play in each other, it gets crazy. Does it? Yeah, it gets <laughs> <laughs> You just got to wait. Did you pimp it? Like, no, you no. Home runs <laughs> I can't pimp CC, man. That's my, that's my, that's my dog. You just head down, all just right? head down, like, fuck, damn. <laughs> That's a long way. Oh, so, <laughs> all right, here it is. You, you got a three thirty nine batting average, an OPS over a thousand, and five dingers Jeez, against you. See, man. yeah. So yeah, it's good. It's good. I took this week off. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this was nice time for a sabbatical. No, no need for you to face face Manny this week. Manny, what about like when you think back about your experience in Baltimore? You're there a long time as a young player. I mean, you came up at a young age. What stands out most thinking back to your years there? Man, the great group we had. We had such a great 
great talent, great group of guys. Adam Jones, Marquez, Weeders, J.J. Hardy. I mean, we all got along so well. And we came, you know, from, you know, when I came up, it was 15 years before they had made the postseason. I came up in August. First wall card game, we win. First time, I think it was the first time the wall card has, uh, was, 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 yeah, the first was able one. when yep. they split it up to the two, mm -hmm. two teams, one game. And we win that. And, you know, from then it was just winning seasons after that, everybody getting together as a group. Um, you know, we had such a special group, man. I think that was, that was what was so special that I, you know, when, when you, when you get a core group of guys like that, I get along so well and are together for such a long period of time. Um, you know, you grow a relationship, and I think that's what you miss most when, you, when, when you're gone or you get traded or, you know, when people start going away. You know, I think that's what you miss most, man, that, that interaction you have with guys in the clubhouse that, you know, when you're picking each other up on the, on the field and you're struggling, when you're 0 for 20, you, you know, you're feeling that. Like, you're, you're, you're 20 for 20, but your boy is 0 for 20, and you're feeling that, man. You're like, come on, let's get ahead, and you're cheering for each other. I mean, I think that, that, that goes a long way, man. I think that's, that's what you miss. We had a very tight group. Of guys who you know we ate dinner together, we went out to together, we did a lot of stuff together. That um, you know, those are memories that you'll never forget. How you know, what's, what's crazy is that like it'll never be the same. You know what I'm saying? Like that, I, I still feel that with my Cleveland teams, the guys that I came up with, Victor Martinez, and you know all those guys that I came up with when I was younger, still my boys. You know what I'm saying? I still talk to them to this day and like still super close. And like you never have nothing like that first group of guys that you came up with yeah. and like won with. You know what I'm saying? So like. That's special when you always hold on to that. You always had that. Yeah, that's so interesting, and I could see that because I mean, think about it. That's your, you know, your, your. I mean, you both were super young. Get it. see, were you nineteen when you started? I was started? nineteen. Yeah. And Manny, you were in the big leagues when you were twenty. 20. Just turned yeah, 20. yeah. So I mean, think about how young that is in those formative years, and you know. You guys are all like, I mean, you're growing up together. Yeah, you're, you're trying to figure it out together, and yep. you don't know you don't know who's gonna make it, and you don't know who's gonna be there for a long time. But you know, you just know that you've been through this journey with these guys in the minor leagues, and you want to get the goal is to get to the big leagues and win. And when you can accomplish that, you know, oh, no matter on what level, you know, I mean. Uh, you know, you, you feel pretty good about it, and that group of guys is always be special. Yeah, that group, it, it was a really good group. I mean, I forget what the exact numbers are, but there was a time where it was like you guys had the most wins of any team during yep. the decade or, you know, whatever it was. And, you know, you went to the playoffs multiple times. Adam's one of our favorites, yeah, and you know sure. he's a good yep. buddy of C's, and we love having him on the potty. So besides his donut expertise, everything else is awesome <laughs> also, you know. You ever get in on, like, yeah. donuts with Adam? But I tell him all the time, like, Jonesy, why don't you just keep it original? Just give me some glazed donuts and just get filled this, that. I'm like, come on, Adam. Like, damn, just keep it simple sometimes. You get, like, That's cool that y'all get to play each other now a lot, too, in, that's the, crazy. in the West, right? Yeah. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. I told him that yeah. the other day. I'm like, man, damn, I thought I was going to come over here by myself. And <laughs> over here in the West. Now I got to see your every, you know, every, every, every other series. I got to see you 18 times. <laughs> Can I get away? Do you have a donut spot for him in San Diego yet? No, but I just found one on Instagram, though. Oh, really? I just found one on Instagram. I'm sorry if I'm, they look bomb. Really? <laughs> they look bomb. But he already probably knows he's from there, so. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. He's probably ate all of them. <laughs> that's true. I, I forgot he was him. from there. That's right. See, you like the like the uh, the glaze from maple. Krispy Kreme, right? Maple. maple. Yeah. yeah, the Any, maple yeah, one. Maple. Yeah, maple. Oh, so good, man. And Simple. And, yeah. Simple. Simple. Maple. You yeah. don't want when they put, maple. like, the Lucky Charms nah, on it or whatever. Nah, I don't want none of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> maple donuts, bro. That's it, man. <laughs> I love, like, the key to success in the big leagues is donuts before the game. <laughs> For like, sure. That is really. 100%. That's, that's what you Load need to do. Load up on your carbs. You know. Buck Showalter, he you know he has a history here, obviously, and he was your manager for a long time in Baltimore. And this uh, the first year in a while he isn't their manager. He always seems super intense. We love storytelling here on R two C two. So I'm wondering, do you have a good like Buck Showalter being super intense story from your years in Baltimore? Every time he came to New York, he was super intense. Yeah, <laughs> he just wanted to beat the Yankees so bad. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, let's go. Like, you know, you, you, we'll feel that pressure coming in here. You know, he just wanted to beat the Yankees all the time. And, um, you know, I think he was – everybody knows who Buck is. You know, he is who he is. He doesn't change for anybody. Just how you see him is how he is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I thought he was such a great manager, especially me coming up as, as a young kid. He taught me so much about the game, about, you know, how to play the game the right way, you know, such of like he's a 
micromanager. Mm -hmm. You know, he he's he's a attention to detail type of guy. Like if you know, he 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 he'll be in here right now. He'll be changing these 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 water bottles. <laughs> like, they're not they're not right. You know, that's just who he who he was. So you know, he's. He was an awesome guy to play with, you know, especially coming up. Um, you know, we loved having him. Uh, learned so much. I'm, I'm the I I, t I tell everybody I'm I'm the player I am today because I had Buck Show Walter as my manager. Wow, that's amazing. How I mean, how much of your third base ability? And you've won two Gold Gloves there, and now you're splitting time between short and third. I mean, how much of that, Manny, was was like, you know, learned nuances once you got to the big league level? And how much of it was the talent you already had there? I think it was just straight talent, honestly. Yeah. It was, it's, it's crazy because I only played three games in the minor leagues. And then they put at me third? at third, yeah. So they told me, they're like, hey, you know, we, you might get called up to the big leagues, but it's to play third base. You know, we don't have a third base right now. They're kind of scuff scuffling. It was Mark Reynolds and Benjamin at the time. And they're like, they're kind of scuffling a little bit. Maybe you might play third. You want to learn how to play third? I was like, yeah, whatever. Anything to get to big leagues. like Yeah, whatever. Got to do. Whatever. So I played there, practiced for like a straight week early work, and the hot buoy, it was oh. hot as hell. <laughs> oh, man, it was hot. I'm out there early work every day. Ten, like straight, it was a 10-day homestand for 10 days playing third base. And I come back, they're like, yeah, you're going to play third. I'm like, all right, when am I going to play third? A month and a half passes, I don't play. Finally, it comes like it was like July something. I played two games at third base. It was a weekend series. So I played three games in third base. Never played third base again. Went back to shortstop. I started raking. A month passes. I get called up to the big leagues to play third base. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Kendall, my manager at the time, was like, hey, uh, you know, you're getting called up to the big leagues. You got to go to Baltimore tomorrow, and you're playing against Kansas City. I was like, oh, you know, fuck shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was fucking awesome. Okay. Yeah. He's like, yeah, but you're going to play third base. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> My heart just dropped. I was like, man, I thought I was supposed to be excited about this moment. Now I got this pressure that I'm going to be playing third base. In the middle of, you know, they were like battling for the wild card spot, first place. I was like, oh, man, I don't want to mess this up. And, you know, I went up there and I just played. I just, you know, Buck told me, he's like, hey, you don't need to worry about hitting. Don't worry about anything. Just catch the ball and make the – if you make errors, who cares? Just make sure you catch it and make a good throw. And if you could do that, then you're going to be fine. So that, that kind of relieved some pressure on me. And I just went out there and I just let my talent take over. I mean, and it did. Like some, yeah. of the, some of the plays. From, right, from, from the beginning, like oh. from right away. It just, it just happens. Like, I mean, people ask me, like, how do you do it? I'm like, I don't – honestly, I, I don't know. I just – just catch the ball. That's the like, best way to know, be, though. Like, when you can't react. explain it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's go glove. <laughs> so now, yeah, yeah, exactly, already two of them. And now, Manny, do you have a strong preference between short and third? Because this year you're about 50-50, I feel like, between the yeah. two positions. Um, you know, I, my, my heart's always been that short, man. I've always wanted to play. I played it last year, and I thought was made me a better player just because I was in the game. I was able to see, you know, from the pitchers, I was able to see pitches, make adjustments, move guys over, move this way. Even then that translated into, like, my hitting. When I went to go hit, I was already knowing, like, okay, man, like, our pitcher's doing this. Maybe, the, like, it made me smarter. Understand, as, as hitter, hit, understand yeah, the game. Of course, yeah. Mm. Where at third base, you really can't. You don't see that because you can't see the signs. You don't know what pitch is coming. You kind of have the shortstop sometimes telling you the signs, but it's a little different, so. You know, playing shortstop last year was, was awesome. I always love to play. I'm better shortstop this year than I was last year just because I got, you know, my feet under me and kind of know what to what to expect over there now. So um, if I had to choose, I mean, I'm the player I am today because of their base. Mm. But, I mean, I love short. Yeah. The, you know, your core, I mean, how much did the idea of, like, having a young group to grow with, with the Padres, how much of a role did that play in your decision to come to San Diego? We know the money is yeah. amazing and the contract <laughs> is great. You know, I mean, that's pretty good. I, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And and by the way, it obviously it should be a huge factor. I mean, yeah. th that's a that's a life altering, family altering, generational sure. decision, of course. You know, but when you when you are looking at the other things on the table. What, you know, how much did that have to do with it, you know, playing with Tatis it, Jr. and everything it's, else? It, it was huge. I mean, obviously, you know, I wanted to win, number one. You know, I wanted to win. And, um, you know, there's a there's a young core group here that we, that have tremendous talent. And to be a part of that and, you know, make them grow, know what I know as, as a player, um, you know, what I could bring to the table was, you know, obviously a big, big thing. So, you know, coming over here, they told me, yeah, you're going to be playing third base. We have Tatis coming over. Want you to help and want him. 
And I saw this kid play in spring training. I'm like, man, thank God I'm playing third base. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> this kid has so much talent. He's 20 years old. He can run. He can catch. He can throw. I mean, you it's know, what I, you was it, eight years, yeah. five years ago. Like, <laughs> I didn't have the speed though. I didn't have the speed. I wish I had that. But you know, just made it made it a lot easier. Just because you know, now I could you know, now I could be JJ Hardy, who was to me. You know, yeah. just kind of helping me out. Making me grow. I won't go gloves because of JJ Hardy. So now I could do the same thing to a player like that. I could do a player to, you know, who, we have Julio, uh, Luis Urias playing second base. He's going to come up and play too. That's, I mean, he has, he has all the tools in the world. Um, you know, the pitching staff that we have, you know, that, 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 that I could give my two cents to. Obviously, I'm not a pitcher. I don't know much. But, you know, you, you kind of give your two cents to them. And, of course. And, um, you know, make them learn. So it's, 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 it's kind of unique the group that we have because we have a little bit of better veteran leadership you know with Kinsler and you know Stammen in the bullpen Kirby myself you know guys who could help these guys out in different ways that can make them better and you know this is this is this is my home for the next 10 years and um you know if, if you could grow with this just like I was in Baltimore we grew up together <clears throat> and you went together I mean it just makes it that much more special See, when I think about the like difference in roles, right, because now Manny goes from being that young gun in Baltimore or whatever to being the relied-upon leader here now, mm-hmm. right? Which which role have you enjoyed more, like being that young dude coming up, whatever, or ne- or being the elder statesman in the clubhouse? Uh, kind of both. Um, you enjoy the young time because it's like – you can do whatever. You know, yeah. it's nothing's your fault. You're just young. <laughs> so you, can, you can do stupid shit and nobody's going to really get mad. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's fun to be young in the game, especially, you know, when you got a lot of talent. You can go yeah. out there and play and, and, you know, you can have some success and, you know, have some good numbers and stuff like that. But, you know, like like you said, paying it, for, like paying it forward and, and being able to be that guy to Tatis and, and you know, help him be a, great, a better player. Um, yeah, it's fun for me now to see Justice Sheffield, you know, Monty and, you know, all these guys that, you know, I get to be around and, and hang around and, and see them come up and, and uh, you know, be better players and, and be, you know, good pitchers. It's, it's fun to be a part of that, too. What did J.J. Hardy teach you? Cause, you know, you just talked about, hey, I wouldn't have my gold gloves without him. You know, what are what's one lesson or some of the lessons he taught you that stays with you today? Consistency. You know, practice, practice consistency. And if you do that, everything else will be easy. I mean, the game is easy. The game doesn't change. We've been playing the same game since you know, we're six years old. Yeah. Obviously, it's a lot stronger guys, bigger guys, better balls, better bats, better gloves. But it's the same game. You got to catch the ball, make the throw. And he was not the flashiest guy of, of them all. He looked kind of weird catching the ball and throwing it. But he made every play. He made every play. He, and, made and every he was play. my shortstop in, in, <coughs> Baltimore, Milwaukee. in Milwaukee. Right, um, yeah. The year before, in 2008. And... I mean, he was unbelievable. He made every play. Every it was play. it was it was great. It was didn't it was look so much great, fun. but he made it. And so watching practice with him, it was just like, all right, I want to catch the ball in the same spot every time. I want to make a chest throw every time. So that's why every time BP, I do the same thing. It's like I'm gonna catch it in one, that one spot, and I'm gonna make that throw in that chest. So it makes it. So now when the game comes around, I'm always hitting Hosmer in the chest. I was always hitting Chris Davis in the chest. You know, obviously there's errors that you know you sometimes happens, but if you could keep that consistent. You know, everything else will take care of itself. And, you know, won my first gold glove, won a platinum that year, 13, and then won another gold glove after that. So and it's just because of that consistency level of it. How about, you know, talking about San Diego and the decision to go to the Padres, how about the weather? I mean, that's got to play a role, right? I mean, it's, it's got to play a role. see this weather here? Yeah. It's rainy. We, might, out today. we yeah. might not play today. <laughs> that's not happening in San Diego. No <laughs> a phrase never uttered in San Diego, actually. I mean, it's got to be beautiful it's, being it's, there. It's amazing waking up every day, and it's 72, 75 every day. Sun's out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's just... It's just beautiful. It's beautiful every day. I think we had a rain out the other day. Well, it didn't rain it out. Was but it was raining. Yeah, I was raining. We're playing the through the game. Yeah. We're like, man, it's, it's kind of coming down pretty hard. Are we going to like tarp this? Nope. Do y'all even have seconds. a tarp? Yeah, they took it out. It comes out of the left field. <laughs> First time I ever seen it, it was out there. I'm like, damn, I didn't even know we had one. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's awesome, man. It's, it's you know, it, it's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful organization. The the, the ball field it's, it's oh it's gorgeous. amazing yeah. it's it's very nice and you know the weather's perfect every day you yeah. know that's what i plan on retiring too bro yeah you're gonna go to san diego yeah when i get old man my kids get old enough to get out of the house i'm definitely going to san diego oh, for be- sure it's well, nice. my favorite fish taco spot in the world is in san diego the fish house you ever been there never 
I'm pretty yeah, sure it's name. Fish Shop. It might be Fish, Fish Shop. Yeah. You just made that up, bro. Yeah, no, no, no. We recording <laughs> this shit, bro. You can't just make shit up when we record. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. I think it's, I think it's the Fish Shop. Because I'm thinking about like. Mama's Fish House is in Maui. Well, I That's know that. Maui. I know that. But no, uh, Pacific Beach Fish Shop. Oh, okay. It's got, but right. it just says like Fish Shop. Oh, my gosh. The, I think the, I passed by the other day, actually. I'm I didn't telling stop you, in, though. I, yeah, I don't know if you're going to get, like, you know, swarmed or whatever, but, like, go. That's a good thing. That's yeah. a good thing about San Diego. Nobody knows who I am. So oh, that's better. great, man. That's even better. That's even better. That's, <laughs> then go the to the streets, fish shop, man. Drive my bird. Oh, dude, that's Do fantastic. Whatever I want. Yes. It's the best. That, that is, that's perfect. You got to check out the fish shop, them. Amazing fish tacos. Like, the sauces they got. Oh, terrific. How about, like, what's an ideal off day for Manny Machado? Man, ideal sleep in. Okay. Uh, eat some food in bed. In bed. In, in bed. bed. In bed. <laughs> right. Cook it downstairs and come it eat come it in bed. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, just chill all day. Chill with my puppies. I got two little dogs, um, Kobe and Kiki. Just chill with them. Watch TV and uh, binge watch. Basically, I just Ooh, kind of another binge watch. Yeah. yeah what I kind just, of shows? What What you into? I'm into Animal Kingdom right now. Okay. I just got into that. Okay. Uh, just finished watching Peaky Blinders. And, Peaky Blinders. Uh, I've never seen he's, it. He's never seen uh, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders good. is dope, uh, man. Uh, that's a good maybe one. that's my yeah. next one, man. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good yeah. one. And uh, we, 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 we didn't finish it, but we were watching some uh, some Spanish soap opera for like years. Oh, uh, okay. Man, these Spanish soap operas, man. They're they going, going forever. forever. <laughs> you can't even finish it. You see Chappie. Chappie be so intense with his Spanish soap operas, bro. And he loves it. Like, it's crazy. But it never finishes. It's like the same oh, crazy. story. That it's is crazy. crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, just, just binge watch and just chill all day. You know, I kind of, you know, we're always on the grind. We're always, you know, moving around, flying, going to places. So we kind of, uh, you know, on those off days, I just want to be in bed or in the house. Yeah. I what about other, house. other sports? You like hoops? Uh, hoops. Uh, NFL? Play a little bit of basketball. Basketball. Play, Watch football, fantasy, big fantasy guy. Huge. Who do you think, Toronto or Warriors? <sighs> Man, I, I hope Toronto gives them a good shot, but I think I think Golden State's gonna take it. They they just got the better team. Yeah, they just you know they're defending champs, and KD's probably gonna come back. You know, not for, one, not for games one not, and two though, and I'm worried about that. I think as they, a Warriors they need fan, KD. they need think, KD. They, they need think KD. they do they in the KD. series. Yes. Yeah, I don't want Kawhi guarding uh, Steph. Mm. He's gonna lock him down. You know what I'm saying? He and, won't be able to do anything. And he's never good with bigger defenders. Like his, this is gonna be a problem. It's It'll be a good serious though. Yeah, yeah, I mean Kawhi. He is just. I always say I do a lot of NBA play by play, and people will ask like, you know, who's the guy like that stands out most to you, whatever. And I, I've said over the last couple of years, the guy who has like, even though I kn- I knew he's great, but like still was like, whoa, when you watch him up close, is Kawhi. That's been the guy for me because he, the way he anticipates things and his hands and his size and his movements, like it, it ain't been many players that 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 are as equally as good on both ends of the floor. Yeah, like he's he's he does elite it both. defender and he's I mean he can score from anywhere on the floor too. It's it's crazy. It's, I mean, Kendrick Perkins said the other day and it was like Scottie Pippen's the only other person I can really think of that's that good on both ends. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like really that that elite. He, uh, that's a good comparison, yeah. like, along those lines. It's true. Where it just, like, locks you down. He locks you down. It's crazy. But I mean, he way, locked up Giannis. Oh, and and that series was anything. over after the first two games. After the first two games, I'm like, the Bucks might sweep these dudes. Yes. And then he just, just I mean, he changed Took the narrative. Over. It was crazy, Took man. Over. It, yeah. Now your dog's named Kobe after. To Kobe Bryant. So he, he was your guy <laughs> growing up? That was my guy. That was my guy. <laughs> Have you gotten a chance to interact with him at all? <clears throat> so last year, uh. You know, I actually got to meet him. So game, I think it was game five of the World Series, uh, the Dodgers invited him over, and he came over and, you know, walked around the clubhouse and stuff, and I had to take a picture with him. So crazy thing was, which I got to tell everybody about this one, but he, uh, so they asked him, because I, I wore number eight going to L.A. because of, cause of Kobe. So I get there, and, you know, they tell me, hey, you're going to come over to the, to the game, game five, you know, we're going to give you a jersey, number eight jersey, with your name on it or whatever. He's like, no. I don't want. I don't want my name on it. I want Machado's jersey. Oh, uh, you know, Machado's jersey. Dope. I was like, damn. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So he ended up wearing my jersey. and He wore it on the game, and he came into the clubhouse, and you know, we took a picture, and he, he had a, he had a, he had a hoodie on. You know, he didn't want to walk around the clubhouse with my jersey. So finally, when I came up, I was getting ready for the game. He comes into the weight room, and I'm working out, and. I try to get up. He's like, nah, nah, nah. Don't worry about it. Finish what you're doing. I'll, you know, I'm like, nah, bro. You're Kobe Bryant, bro. I'll, I'll stop what I'm doing right quick. I come take a picture. So I got up and took a picture. He takes it off. He's like, hold on. I got to take, take something off. So he takes it off. And he's like, 
damn, bro. <laughs> that was wearing my jersey, bro. <laughs> Which was, you know, that, that that's one of my most, I will never forget that in my entire life. You know, that was pretty, pretty special. That is an awesome story. That's dope. That's crazy. And that is like, I mean, you talk about meeting your heroes and that kind of thing. That's that's incredible, man. It was awesome, Manny. We could awesome. do this all day, dude. I know uh, you know you've given us a ton of time. Want to let you get out of here, but thank you. Like I was always a fan watching you, but now I'm like, yo, Manny's really cool. Like I, you know, I mean, like, <laughs> this is what we love about R2C2, For though, sure. right? Like you get to know guys, and that's yeah. why C wanted to do this. Like we love storytelling, get to know you guys. This sure. is a lot of fun, man. Best of luck in San Diego, thank you, man. man. Appreciate you guys, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll have you back on sometime. For, For sure. sure. Thank you, Manny. Awesome, man. Thank you, guys.